Before operating your GTX, it is important to tilt back your GTX's seat platform to gain access to the battery pack. It is important to wear proper safety gear whenever working with lead acid batteries. Your GTX contains 18 removable battery fill caps. It is important to check the water level of each one of these fill ports before machine operation. The battery should be topped off using only distilled water, approximately 1 8 inch below the bottom of the vent well, as shown in the above picture. It is also important to ensure that all battery cables are properly tightened to the battery terminals as demonstrated here. Once your batteries have been properly checked, it is important to make sure that your GTX battery pack is properly charged. To do so, plug your battery charger into a 110 volt outlet and then plug your gray Anderson plug into the side of the steering wheel column as shown. The charger that comes with your GTX is fully automatic. It will charge the batteries and automatically turn off when the batteries are fully charged. For more information about the charging process, please refer to your GTX owner's manual. Next, open your recovery tank lid to expose the inside of your 35 gallon recovery tank. Located on the recovery tank's right side is the drain saver assembly. By removing the drain saver hose, this will give you access to the drain saver basket for simple serviceability. Located to the left side of the recovery tank is the automatic float shutoff assembly. By releasing the white retainer clip, the float shutoff can be easily removed as demonstrated here. It is important to make sure that this float shutoff and the float shutoff assembly are always clean and in proper working order before operating your GTX right on scrubber. Located in the center of the recovery tank, dividing the tank in half is the anti-foam baffle assembly. This assembly helps reduce foam in the recovery tank during everyday cleaning operations. Located on the front left side of the recovery tank is the 35 gallon solution tank fill port. This port is where you would fill your clean water tank with fresh water and proper chemical before your daily cleaning operations. Located on the top of your GTX recovery tank lid is a removable clear sight dome assembly. This dome allows you to be able to view inside the recovery tank without having to lift the recovery tank lid. This sight dome contains an oversized vacuum seal. It is important that this seal is cleaned after every use and check that it is in proper working order before your daily scrub cycle. It is also important to clean the base of the sight dome as well as to make sure that when replacing the sight dome that the chain lanyards are held inside the tank assembly and do not impede the sealing of the sight dome itself. Next, pull back the seat housing of your GTX as shown above. Doing this allows easy access to your vacuum motor assembly. This also gives you easy access to your solution flow hoses. The solution enters from the solution tank as shown. Then, the solution flows through with oversized clear stainless steel reinforced hose assemblies. The solution is filtered by a stainless steel screen assembly and from there, the solution flows to your scrub deck assembly as demonstrated by the graphic above. Your GTX is equipped with an inline solution shutoff valve as shown here. This allows you to service the inline 400 mesh stainless steel solution screen assembly. Once a clear dome has been removed, simply pull the mesh screen from the filter assembly and clean and reassemble in reverse order. Once completed, make sure that the solution shutoff valve is reopened as demonstrated here. This service should be done on a monthly basis. If your GTX is equipped with a disc deck assembly, remove the two lock nuts as demonstrated here to gain access to your brush assemblies. To remove your brush assemblies, simply depress the brush spring clip and the brush automatically will drop off from the brush assembly as demonstrated here. Your GTX brush assembly is equipped with a gimbal mount brush mount. This allows the brushes to articulate with the most uneven of floors without damaging the machine. Located on the periphery of the brushes are the solution intake ports. 
This allows for even distribution of your cleaning solution throughout the entire scrub brush assembly. To remount your scrub brush, simply press the gimbal spring against the gimbal mount and click in place accordingly. If your GTX is equipped with a cylindrical scrub deck, to press the spring-loaded lock assembly and open the brush deck shroud as shown. Once this is done, remove the clevis pin and open the skirt assembly. Next, to press the spring clip to remove the brush hub assembly as demonstrated here. Gently remove to gain access to your cylindrical brush. Note, there are two brush housing assemblies located on each of the scrub deck's assembly. Located just behind the cylindrical brush port is a removable debris tray. This debris tray is found only on cylindrical scrub decks. This tray will collect any type of small debris that may be in the way of your scrub path. Note, it is important to empty and clean the cylindrical tray after every solution tank dump and refill cycle. To reinstall your cylindrical brush, simply slide it into the brush channel so that it lines up with the brush hub on the opposite side of the deck. Then, replace the brush hub assembly, skirt assembly, and clevis pin, followed by closing and locking the brush shroud door. Located on the rear of your GTX recovery tank is a black flexible accordion recovery tank drain hose. To drain the recovery tank, simply unscrew the pressure fit T-handle and drain the recovery tank into a properly approved drain basin. Once the tank has been drained, simply retighten the brass T-handle as demonstrated above. Located just to the left of the recovery tank drain hose is a clear clean water solution tank sight gauge. This tube has demarcation points to indicate at what level your solution tank is filled. By removing the sight gauge tube, the solution tank can be easily evacuated of all cleaning solutions. Once drained, simply replace the sight hose accordingly. Located just below these hoses is the parabolic squeegee assembly. Located just above the squeegee mounting bracket is a gold colored squeegee pitch adjustment knob. The squeegee tip pressure can be adjusted by turning this knob to the right or to the left. Turning the knob to the right will increase squeegee tip pressure. Turning the knob to the left will decrease the squeegee tip pressure. The key to a properly set squeegee is to have an even deflection of the entire squeegee wiper rubber assembly. For more information about setting your squeegees, please contact your GTX owner's manual. After every cleaning shift, it is important to remove and clean your squeegee assembly. To do so, simply unscrew the two squeegee mounting knobs as demonstrated here. Once the knobs have been loosened, simply slide the squeegee assembly off the squeegee mounting brackets as shown. Located on the right hand side of your GTX steering wheel column is a silver safety horn button. And located just below this is your ergonomic handle control for your handle adjustment assembly. Located to the far lower right side of the steering wheel control column are the machine runtime hour meter and below this the battery charge count meter. Next, located on the lower left side of your steering wheel column assembly is the headlight switch. Located on the left of the operator's compartment is the operation control panel. The green UniTouch button automatically activates your vacuum and scrub brushes when they are set to the on position. See owner's manual for more detailed information. Located to the right of this is the red fork reverse motion toggle switch. Right above these two buttons are three black rocker switches. The far left rocker switch activates your vacuum motor and lowers your squeegee assembly. The middle rocker switch is your adjustment for solution flow. This has variable flow, as demonstrated here. And to the far right is the rocker switch for activating your scrub deck. Located above these are the black brown pressure adjustment toggle switch. Note, with the brush pressure toggle switch, in the lowest setting there will always be two bars showing. 
This pressure is infinitely adjustable as demonstrated here. Located above the black down pressure toggle is the green information button. Pressing this button activates the machine system's hour meter, displaying the following. First, total machine runtime, followed by traction motor runtime. Next, brush motor runtime. And lastly, vacuum motor runtime. To the far left is the battery level condition meter. Located just above the green information button is the red full recovery tank indicator light. This indicator light will illuminate when the recovery tank is full. When all functions are in the on position and the accelerator pedal is depressed, activation indicators for brush movement, solution flow, and vacuum recovery will activate on the LCD panel as demonstrated here. Located on the lower right side of the operator's panel are located the activation controls for primary power switch, optional recycling, auxiliary vacuum recovery, spray jet, e-stop, economy mode, suds chemical injection, side broom activation switch, along with resettable fuses for side broom lift actuator and side broom motor resettable negative and positive primary fuse reset buttons. See owner's manual for more detailed information about this auxiliary panel. For information on how to operate your GTX, continue to operations video number three of the three-part video series.